Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem palindrome number. In this problem, we're given an integer x and we want to return true if and only if this integer x is a palindrome number. And what exactly is a palindrome? Well, basically a number that reads the same way as it does backward, as it does forward, basically you reverse it and it's the exact same. And you probably know, if you're familiar with palindromes, you probably know how to detect palindromes when it comes to strings. So you might think, okay, we can just take this entire number, right? One, two, one, convert it into a string, uh, like one, two, one, and then it'll be easy to determine if it's a palindrome. That's a good idea, but if you read down below, the follow-up question they have for us is, can we do it without converting the integer to a string? So that's going to make this problem a little bit more tricky for us, but I'm still going to show you how to do it. So with a string, it would be easy because we could have two pointers, right? A pointer at the beginning and a pointer at the end, and then we could just compare each character or each digit, and if they're equal, we continue. If they're unequal, then we return false because then we know it's not a palindrome. Basically, I'm going to use that same idea, but I'm going to use it without creating a string. I'm going to use it just by doing the math operations on this input integer. So suppose we have a value one, two, one. We want to know if it's a palindrome. So one, what we want to do is we want to get the ones place and get the left value, right? The left value and the right value. How do we get the right value? That's the easy part, right? In math, uh, you might know from some programming problems you've done, if you mod something by 10, we get the ones place, right? If you take 121, mod it by 10, we get the value one. Right, which is what we wanted to get. We wanted to get this right value. Next, what we want to do is get the left value. So how are we going to get this left value? Because once we get the left value, then we can compare it with the right value, and then we can check if it's a palindrome or not, right? Well, what math operation could we do on this to get this value? We are asking ourselves, this is 121. We want to know what value goes here. In other words, we want to know what digit is in the hundreds place. How can you do that in uh, math? Well, if we divide this by by 10, not by 10, but if we divide it by 100, then that will tell us how many a hundred, how many hundreds go in this value. And it'll always round down towards zero. So in this case, 121 divided by 100 is going to evaluate to one because we're rounding down, right? If instead we were doing 220 divided by 100, then we would get two because we have two hundreds in this value, right? So that's kind of the idea. Okay, so now we have the left value and the right value. We compare these two together. They are equal to each other, right? So then we can continue, right? But now we, we compared these values, so we want to chop them off. How can I get rid of the left and right values? So if I have 121, I want to get rid of the right value because we already compared it, right? How can I do that? Well, I can take this, divide it by 10. That will chop off the ones place. So if I divide it by 10, it'll round down and then we'll get the value 12. That's awesome because that's what we wanted to do. So if we have 121 and now we want to get rid of the left digit because we already used it. How do we get rid of this left digit? Well, we had a hundred up above, right? We were taking this and dividing it by a hundred because we know that a hundred is the most significant digit for this, right? We couldn't do a thousand because a thousand would be too big, right? So if we take a hundred and actually take 121 and mod it by a hundred, and this is the, kind of the tricky part that that makes this problem difficult, right? That's why this is a follow-up because you probably wouldn't guess to do something like this. At least it would take some thought to figure it out, right? So if we take 100, it take 121, mod this by 100, that'll get rid of this first digit for us because it'll give us all the remaining stuff in this portion, right? So when we when we do this operation, we're left with, uh, with 21, right? Our goal was to get rid of this one's place, this one digit, and we did that. Our next goal is to get rid of this digit, right? Because we used this digit and we used this digit. We want to get rid of them. How do we get rid of this one over here? Let me show you how. So this is the easy part, right? We have 21. If we divide 21 by 10, that's how we can get rid of the ones place, right? 
and it'll always round down, right? So 21 divided by 10 is gonna be two because it's rounding down. So we successfully did what we wanted to do. We chopped off the left and right digits, right? So now we're left with two. And then now that we have our new digit or the new value, we're basically gonna repeat what we just did up above, except the only difference is gonna be up here, to get the to get the obviously the left and right digit since this is just one value the left and right digit are going to be the exact same right so up above to get the left digit what we did was we divided it by a hundred first right now instead of dividing this by a hundred we're actually going to be dividing this by one because we chopped off two digits remember so before we had a value that was at least greater than a hundred now we chopped off two digits so now we're going to have a value that's at least greater than one. That's why we're when we get the left digit, every time we're gonna be taking this value and and basically removing two digits from it. So I hope that this makes sense so far. And let me just repeat this on a different example to give you a slightly more clear explanation. And one other thing I wanna mention is down below in the second example, you can see that we have 121 except it's negative, right? So it is a palindrome, but it is negative. So negative numbers in this case are always gonna be false because you can see once we reverse it, we have that negative sign on the right side, right? So we don't want that. So any negative numbers are always gonna be false. Now let's take a look quickly at a different example, slightly different, one, two, two, one. So this is just one extra digit. So if in this case, we want to get the right digit, which is one, once again, we're gonna take this, mod it by 10, we get the one value on the right. If we wanna get the, the value on the left, we're gonna take one, two, two, one, and divide it by a thousand, right? A thousand, because this value is in the thousands place, right? So we divide that. And once we've done that, we'll get a one, which is the one from the left side, right? So now we compared it, right? We did what we wanted to do. Now what we're gonna do is chop off the left digit and the right digit. So when, once we do that, we're gonna be left with 22, right? Now we wanna get the right digit. How do we do that? Once again, just mod it by 10, right? That's what we did up above. It works this time as well. We mod it by 10, we get the right two. How do we get the left two, right? In this case, 22. Previously, we divided this by a thousand, right? That's how we got the left digit from over here, right? Now we we want to get the left digit again instead of dividing by a thousand now i'm going to divide by 10 right instead of a thousand because we got rid of two digits right so we have to get rid of two digits from here so if, when we take this from a thousand now it becomes 10 and then we get that same left digit two right so what i'm saying is this value that we have here it's going to go from a thousand to being 10 right before what we had was a hundred and that hundred went to being one so on each iteration this value it could be really big right it could be ten thousand right every iteration it's going to lose two digits so it's going to go from being ten thousand to maybe being a hundred and then once again losing two digits it's now just going to be one until all the loop has basically been done executing once we have no digits remaining. So I hope that this is helpful because this is the math that we're going to be doing and the rest of the problem becomes pretty simple once you can figure this out. So let's jump into the code now. Okay, so let's dive into the code now. We're given an input value x and the first thing we're going to check is, is this value negative? Is it less than zero? Because if it is, then we can basically return false immediately, right? That's what we discussed from the second input example. The next thing we're going to do is basically come up with that divider value that we were using. Remember that value that could be a hundred, it could be a thousand, it could be anything, right? Initially it's one. We want to know how large should this be? So how are we going to determine that? Well, basically, if x is even greater than 10 times the divider, and not just greater, but maybe greater than or equal, if it's greater, then that means we're going to continue to increase our divider, right? Basically, divider multiplied by 10, right? Because we're trying to get the most significant divider that we can that is still less than or equal to this x value, right? That's what we're trying to do, right? If we have a value 121, we want to get at least 100, right? If we have 121, 1, if we have a value 1200, then we want to get to at least 1000, right? That's what we're trying to do here with this while loop. Once once we have that, then we're ready to roll with the rest of the algorithm. We're going to check, okay, while x is non-zero, right, we're going to keep comparing the left and right digits. How do we get the right digit? Well, remember, all we have to do is take x, mod it by 
10. How do we get the left digit? That's slightly more difficult, but we can still do it. All we got to do is take X and divide it by the div the divider value that we determined up above I'm using two slashes because in Python this is how you do integer division and once we have these left and right digits what are we going to check well we just want to know if left does not equal right then we can return false so now we want to chop off the left and right digits right because we just use them up above how do we chop off the left digit well you might remember if we take x mod it by the div that we determined up above that will chop off the left digit so now we chopped off the left digit how do you chop off the right digit well basically take this integer division by 10 and then you're good so we chopped off the left and the right digit with this single line of code that I just showed you. And remember, last but not least, that divider value up above div, we don't have to, we can't forget to update this as well. How do we update this? Well, every time we just want to chop off two digits from it, right? So how do you do that? Well, just take div, take itself, divide it by a hundred. That will chop off two digits for us. And believe it or not, this is the entire code. Once we're done with this while loop, we will have successfully determined that it is a palindrome, so we can return true out here. We return false inside if it's not a palindrome, and this is the entire code, and I'll run it to make sure it works and it is efficient, and yes, it is. And one last thing I want to mention, you can actually take these two lines of code up above left and right. We don't actually need variables for them. I just used that to kind of make it simple for you. You can take uh, the right value and then cut it and then just paste it in here for this condition and take the left value, cut it, and then paste it here and then we can get rid of those two lines of code uh, and you know then the solution looks pretty short and easy it's definitely not as easy as it looks I would say this is this follow-up portion at least is a medium problem because it's not easy to come up with but I hope that this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon thanks for watching